A victory for the street or an attempted soft coup? State television in Algeria broadcasting images of an ailing president tendering his immediate resignation. Abdelaziz Bouteflika already in government at independence from France back in 1962 and who under pressure from mass protests these past weeks first had to forego a fifth mandate and now renege on a caretaker status. As has so often been the case in Algeria's tumultuous history, it's the military that tipped the scales. Dropping Bouteflika to try and safeguard its interests, Tuesday's announcement was preceded by travel bans, arrests of top business leaders close to the president. Will it be enough to appease citizens who want wholesale change? Could we now enter a period of score settling with old vendettas resurfacing? and a scramble for the state-run enterprises that gravitate around Algeria's oil riches. Can the younger generation succeed in overturning what Algerians call le système, the system, without the bloodshed of the past? Today in the France 24 debate, we're wondering, is it really out with the old and in with the new? And joining us is entrepreneur Amina Afaf Shayeb. Many thanks for joining us. Thank you. Also with us, uh, the, you're a member of the civic group, how do you pronounce it? Ib Ibtikar. Ibtikar. Which means innovation. Which means innovation. And a maynus in Tamazight. Okay. <laughs> With us as well. Uh, Jamal Berber, member of Stand Up Algeria. Yeah. Which uh, also a civic group? It's a civic group, absolutely. And thank you for having me today. All right. Uh, Majid Messaouden, municipal councillor in the uh, Paris suburb of Saint Denis, Franco Algerian, just back. Yeah, back from Algeria. I'm going back there. Uh, in within t 10 days. All right. And from uh, Algiers, we welcome back to the show Mubarak Malik Sarai, former advisor to Algeria's former president, Yamin Zerwal. The France 24 debate on Facebook and yes, Twitter, yes. hashtag F24 debate. For the first time in two decades, the sun rose this Wednesday on an Algeria where Abdelaziz Bouteflika was no longer the president. The president didn't just resign, the people pushed him out. Today we are demanding that Bouteflika's clan are put on trial. We are asking for justice. We're still in absolute hell. Nothing's really clear. But now the people have risen, and I think that's a good thing. There are no celebrations. Victory will come once we've had a democratic election without any bloodshed. So, Majid Nesaudin, uh, it was interesting, the images we saw uh, when that announcement was made late on Tuesday, celebration, spontaneous scenes of joy, it, they weren't huge demonstrations, though. Yeah, and I think it's the first step. They are aware uh, of the fact that uh, they forced Boutifika to leave. As uh, the, the man said, uh, Boutifika did not resign. He was forced to, to, to quit uh, and uh, more precisely, uh, his entourage, his friends, and the army forced him to leave because he's not able of anything today. We know that. And I think that the, 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 the huge demonstrations yesterday, uh, you, you feel the relief of the, the Argentine population. And everybody says that uh, it's only a first step and that the hardest uh, is coming. And uh, we have to be very uh, careful about what's going to happen in the few in the in, in the next uh, yeah, weeks. The, the hard part still uh, to come. because many yeah because uh, what did the army uh, is not a coup but uh, Gaid Salah he's part of the new government this is the chief of staff yes and uh, I, I think that they will try their best to keep their privileges and I'm very 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 uh, I want to I want to yeah. revisit that point because it's an important one first though Malik Sarai in the past hours we've had a letter from now former President Abdelaziz Bouteflika, uh, in which he apologized to the Algerian people. What's your reaction? He apologized because for the uh, mandate number four, he was not working well and he was uh, controlled by a few people, uh, not, uh, not good at all uh, for the economy and for the social uh, distribution of the income. No, no, now, uh, it's the first stage, it's not enough at all. It's just because he arrived already uh, to the end of his mandate and, and people are not uh, very happy because we are waiting more and more, I mean, advanced in the articulation of the, uh, the government, but also for the, uh, to change the different law 
to let the people to try, start to control and to advise a new kind of management because the, the, the programs are very, very, very complicated and heavy. And the, the real problem will start today and tomorrow because the, the, the Bouteflika he left and left, left for us uh, a country with the big problems, a very complicated. And uh, let's hope we will, we, will, uh, we, will, we will get a few personalities with, with high level of competence and seriously uh, yeah. and with good history to let us to, to, uh, to take in there's a new government. All right, we'll talk yes. about uh, about who who's going to step into the fray. Uh, Amina Fashad, you, your reaction to this uh, apology by by Bouteflika? Well, the time is not for apologies or looking back to the past. Yeah. Uh, finally, we're all looking forward. And uh, all Algerians uh, are saying, well, cool, we just won a small battle. Uh, now there is an entire war, and it's on the long haul that all the changes uh, will happen. Uh, no apologies. What we want is um, a democratic framework uh, to have a seat on the table uh, at the decision making and to make the democratic transition real. All right. And at the outset of our conversation, Majid uh, uh, pointing out his concerns regarding the role of the military, a military which draws its legitimacy from Algeria's bloody struggle for independence from France. It's sometime since, though, played a murky role. Claire Mufson has more. Long the backbone of Abdelaziz Bouteflika's power, the Algerian army ultimately abandoned the 82-year-old president after weeks of protest. The army's powerful chief of staff, Ahmed Gaid Salah, called a meeting of the top brass on Tuesday and said that Bouteflika had to go immediately. Our decision is clear and there's no turning back. We stand by the people, so all demands are met with no exceptions. The first sign of the army's disintegrating support for Bouteflika came last week, when Gaid Salah, a longtime ally of the president, called for him to resign or to be declared medically unfit under Article 102 of the Constitution. The army has been the central power broker in Algerian politics for decades. It has chosen, approved, or removed every president since the country gained independence in 1962. In 1965, an army colonel, Houari Boumedienne, ousted the country's first democratically elected president, Ahmed Ben Bella. In 1992, during the decade of bloody civil war, the military pushed out President Chadli Ben Jadid. And in 1999, the army helped usher Bouteflika into power backing him through his two-decade rule and allowing him to defy term limits and weather unpopularity and ill health. So, J Jamil Berber, is Algeria a bit like Pakistan, where the uh, army calls the shots from the, uh, from the sidelines and stays out of the day-to-day -day running of politics? Yeah, I mean, this is, uh, yeah, it, you can say that, but it's really well hidden because it's a long time that the army is, is very influential in Algeria. We don't really know everything about it. We, we know the main figures, but we don't know what's behind. Even we today, the, we don't know? Oh, of course we don't. I'm sure we don't. We, you, we know the name of the security chief like a few years after he was very efficient. You know, it's, it, that's the way it is. So I'm sure that there is lots of power in the army today. And I'm sure there is also lots of power on the president's side. And this is an infighting. It's not like a, a war between them. It's just a, a fight between them to decide who's going to drive the show. How to share. Yeah, share. How, how to share. So they're jockeying the for risk. position right now. Yeah, yeah. That's my view of it, yeah. Yeah, but you're, they're faced as well with these unprecedented mass protests. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's a power play with the street. How do they put that, how do they quell those protests if it's still, can the military still continue to call the shots going forward? Um, uh, the more transparency, the less they will control the shots. For the moment, we get news from time to time. We don't know where they're coming from. Some people meet somewhere and poof, they come up with something. So the only way to really bring the army back into where they should be, which is under the control of the society, is really to have more transparency. And we don't have it at the moment. And that's uh, what should happen in the future. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of, uh, you talk about transparency, we're a little confused because the Constitutional Council this Wednesday 
rubber stamping the resignation of Abdelaziz Bouteflika, but we haven't heard about a swearing-in ceremony. Normally, it should be, what, the head of the uh, upper chamber who, uh, who takes over the interim presidency. For the transition, yeah, for three months. But we don't know yet what's going on. Yeah, uh, but, uh, but what we know is that he's part of the system because he has been there for, for, for years. Are you expecting him to take up his post? I don't know. That's what the street is calling for. Yeah. They're calling for, for Gaid Saleh to leave along with Bouteflika, yeah. for Ben Saleh also to leave, because they're all part of the same clique and they're all part of the problem. The, 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 their demands had, have not changed since yesterday. They want the system to, to resign, and not only uh, some men are, are, are of the system. M Malik Sarai, as we speak at this hour, who's running Algeria? I don't. Excuse me, first of all, I would like to, to, to give a, 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 a precise uh, uh, memo. The, you, you must know that 60% now of the officials uh, in the army are very young, with very high educated means. They didn't, they didn't accept at all that the army could interfere in the civil management. This is definitely well known. The, the Algerian army is changing since 10 years. We have no more the, the, the exactly the same officials. The, the old officials from the 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 the, the, uh, the, the revolution there are may, just a few with Gaid Salah, but the the main force. Yeah, Ga that's the, important the, point. The, the Gaid Salah is the Albert. Gaid Salah is the the last of the generation that actually fought in the War of Independence. Yes, exactly. Exactly. When we know the Minister of Defense, we know that 60 percent of the of the officials are very young and they want to be to to, to be more and more with the. Uh, next to the Europeans and uh, to develop, I mean, uh, the, to give the country uh, an, an, a new of the, to the new generation and to, to refuse to interfere in the civilian, I mean, uh, management. This is we know we know exactly. But uh, so I don't think so that Great Salah will will interfere in the presidency next time to control the 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 the, the, uh, the presidency. But we will we will find uh, a, a new civilian to come up from this. Uh, young people and then uh, we will so, so my question now again get, uh, malik I mean, uh, malik my question again yes. who right now is in charge yes. who's running algeria no 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 one it, no one is just uh, uh, an observation until uh, the government uh, play a very limited role uh, in fact even the government is rejected by the population because they are not so competent uh, at as head of person to what uh, we, were, we were waiting to the nominations. That. So it's very dangerous situation actually uh, for this weekend, the very, very dangerous situation because unless unless the, the army continue to respect the, 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 I mean, the, the, the rule and regulation, uh, I mean, the, the, we are in a very difficult situation. We don't know exactly who will come up uh, unless Mr. Zerwal will accept once again to come back and to to, I mean, to rule the, the, the situation, we think two or three other people with him uh, until we, we, we put all the, the instruments of, of charge of the government of the, the country. This is, uh, we, maybe I, this, for this 24 hours, we, we, we will see who are the civilian personality who come up, uh, I mean, to, to work with the army, because the army, I am sure, they refuse to interfere in the management of the civilian organization. You, you agree with that, Amina? Yeah. I think it's very important to specify that there are some individuals uh, within, within the, the military institution that meddle in politics and have always meddled in politics. But it's, I think it's, it's very important to have the precaution to say that there are a lot of brave, honest, uh, also people who are professionals whose job is to secure uh, Algeria's territory and to guarantee the sovereignty. Second of all, I think it's a very uh, big challenge ahead of us to proceed precisely limit the role of the military to its professional role and leave the politics to civilians. So I agree with these points. Um, I'd like also to uh, express... Is it uh, doable? It is doable, but it is not doable within the system. It, this is why uh, Algerian people have a point. Uh, we 
need a breakup uh, with the regime, including its military component, especially, I would say, its military component. And, and Malik Sarai's uh, warning that it could be dangerous days ahead. Friday is another big day of demonstrations. I wouldn't call it dangerous. Uh, if anything, uh, for the past six weeks, what we have proven is that, no, this is not a military coup or any or uh, a, a political coup. Uh, it is actually uh, a methodic, relentless, pacific citizen process of Algerians exercising their legitimate uh, right but to it's express become, themselves. But it's become a power play. At what point Definitely. does then the uh, regime and the vested interests feel threatened and react violently? Well, you have 20 million, according to a lot of estimates, in the streets. That's half roughly half the Algerian population all around the country uh, claiming their legitimate right uh, to uh, take charge of their destiny and to be heard. How could any kind of institution, political or military, mi military disregard that and deny that? Majid Misaouden, up to now, the calls have been clear. First, it was no to a fifth mandate for Abdelaziz Bouteflika, then it was Bouteflika out, and now, as you've just heard uh, from Amina, it's we want le système, the system, the vested interest out. Can the protesters stay unified? They can and they will, because they know that they must stay unified. And from the beginning, uh, they called for the end of the system. Uh, they've been calling f for the end of the system since many years, but we did not hear them the way we hear them today. Um, and you, you were asking um, before who is in charge of Algeria today. The same that have been in charge of Algeria the last three years. You know, uh, the, the Bitafrika was not leading Algeria. Uh, his friends did with the army. Um, and I think that um, Malek uh, talked uh, about young uh, leaders in the military. It's true, but I don't think that the military would change by the inside. I think that the, the, the oldest have the leadership in the army, and they have many to lose. So the population, the people, uh, has the responsibility to, to force the military to change, to force them to change, and to quit the power, and to let the power to the, to the civilians, as, as you said before. And I'm very trustful. Uh, I'm very optimistic uh, uh, because when you see uh, the way they mobilize, the way they take st the, the, the Algerian streets, is very huge. We have never seen that before. Mm. And they're really determined. And I think that nothing can stop them. And we can't imagine a repression of 5, 10 or 15 million Algerians in the streets. All right, we're going to pick up on these points. When we come back, we're going to take a quick break. You're watching the France 24 debate. Welcome back, or welcome if you're just joining us. It's the France 24 debate. The old leader is gone, but le système, the system, is still there. We're talking about Algeria after the resignation of 82-year-old President Abdelaziz Bouteflika, who'd been in power for two decades. We're talking about it with entrepreneur Amin Ashav Shayeb, who is with us. Welcome back. Uh, you're with the civic group Ibtika. Uh, engineer Jamal Berber, who is a member of Stand Up Algeria, both your movements which have been uh, rallying here in the French capital with the uh, diaspora uh, every every weekend. Uh, uh, Sunday. For, for the last uh, six weeks. Uh, next Sunday, too. And yeah. next Sunday as well. Okay. Uh, Majid Bessaouden, municipal councillor uh, in the uh, Paris suburb of Saint-Denis and of Algerian parentage. And uh, from Algiers, Mubarak Malik Sarai, former advisor to the ex-president, uh, Liamin uh, Zerwal. Uh, Majid Bessaouden, you in the past weeks uh, returned to the Kabylia of your, yep. of your parents. There are old uh, misgivings, it's bad blood over uh, the way that region has been treated by the central authorities in the past. When, with this protest movement, is that really being put aside and it's the, the, the focus is remaining squarely on national politics or have regional issues and score settling come into it? Well, uh, for, for what I, I have seen when I, when I was there, 
uh, they only uh, talk about the system. They only talk about the way that they will manage and succeed to put the system out and to replace it by a democratic um, framework uh, in which they will be able to, uh, to, to build uh, a new Algeria uh, with uh, the youth that we, we know that Algeria is a very young country, uh, like 45%, I think, that less than 25 years. 25 so, years old, yeah. Yeah, so we know it's a very young country, and uh, wherever I, uh, I go there, uh, nobody talk, talks to me about uh, regional uh, uh, issues. They know that it's not the time for that. They are very mature. They know that the only interest of the Algerian people is to, to get rid of this oh, Okay, system. so Amina, you're just back from Algiers, and we, we've seen the images in those demonstrations. It's a wide array of people, some young, some old, uh, some wearing headscarves, others not. Uh, everybody's agreeing on what they don't want, but f to have a transition, they're going to at some point have to agree on what they do want. Well, even the streets, we have seen the slogans, slogans evolving from anti Bouteflika to pro something. And, and what is that, that pro something, something? Is a transition. It's um, a transitional government. It's democracy. It's rule of law. It's no corruption and impunity. So it is getting more and more precise. Um, just. Um, just a few days ago, uh, we saw uh, people organizing citizen workshops in the streets and public spaces to debate over what is the specific route to take uh, in order to make that happen. And is it the same case as in Egypt where uh, people reject people who claim to be leaders or are they designating uh, representatives? How well, does it work? Well, the sentiment is that we are fed up with uh, top-down decisions. Uh, we are fed up of not having a seat at the table. Uh, every Friday, people, millions of people take the streets to protest with specific demand and categorical demands and in the sa speaking the same voice that is clear to hear. And every week, just a few days after these demonstrations, we have a new, um, a new declaration, a new letter that is trying to negotiate. So. so so you have coordinators, because at some point you do need a leadership, don't you? I think that's the challenge right now, is representativity. And uh, it has to come from the people, by the people, and no imposed leaders. Uh, we call this za'imism. Uh, we don't want someone to be uh, a forced leader and uh, take credit. Uh, we want uh, the leaders to emerge from civil society. Jamal Berber, what, what do you do? Do you recognize personally the, the Algerian constitution, which right now has, uh, under the terms of the constitution, uh, the interim president has, what, 45 days to... Uh, I think it's uh, 90. Or 90 days, 90 excuse days. me, you're right, 90, 90 days. Uh, yeah. 45 days, a little short. Like 90 days to organize elections. Do, yeah. do you think that that's the way to go? Or what would you see as... as the, uh, how does it work right now, going yeah, forward? Yeah, I mean, how does it work? The, our, the main force of what we what we are the main change force here is the peacefulness of those demonstrations. So the the crowd is not going to impose to the government nothing, right? The crowd is peaceful, and the, the it's in the hands of the power. It's in the hands of the government at the moment to drive the show. So I think that there is a demand for a new constitution. It would cost us two years probably. And there is an opportunity to go faster. And uh, there, there is dangers in both sides. How do you go faster? Uh, following the current, the current uh, path that is, in fact, decided by Bouteflika, because he resigned. So we have only 90 days. So uh, uh, I think it's about uh, opening uh, a certain number of, uh, of uh, controls from the government. For example, the TV in Algeria is under control. The newspapers are under control. The radio is under control. And there is lots of fake news. So really, we don't know what is happening in this government. We don't know what is happening in this uh, uh, constitutional council and so on and so forth. So those are the first things that we have to achieve is really to break this control. Uh, of, of the press and TV and etc. and really have people being able to go and investigate and be protected when they investigate. Malik Sarai, the street is demanding what it calls a second republic. 
Um, do you see the interim leadership in Algeria, though, trying to organize elections and trying to keep this, the same constitution we have now? Yeah, uh, in fact, we were working by the time, in the past in the, in the constitution. We uh, we take, in fact, the experience of many uh, uh, countries like France, uh, Britain, uh, USA, Belgium, just to uh, have to take advantage of the experience of this developed country. And now, as far as we didn't show any uh, high personality coming up from the civilian, I mean, uh, 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 the pressure, we, 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 we're still waiting because the danger is we have very strong pressure from the street, one side, the other side we have, I mean, stand, stand by from the army waiting any 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 group of persons to come up. From the third side, this government is very weak. So this this is this, the difference between the two or the three will will will, will let us to I mean to record many faults of the past and to try to propose, in fact. Uh, uh, new solution. In fact, we are reading already uh, many papers to propose in case of we will put, uh, we will have, I mean, uh, a team, national team, and uh, to take advantage of what we have done yet 20 years ago, uh, because it's a problem of time. We must not lose too much time of this. And uh, and uh, why not? Uh, the, the, the question of the Second Republic uh, I mean, it's not it's not uh, definitely uh, accepted by by all the people, uh, and unless we come up with uh, with uh, uh, a kind of consultation, large consultation, and maybe the idea will be will be come up, and then with the consultation of the army from the side and the young people from the other side, and uh, what we have as an expert or all intellectual, for the Algerians are living in Algeria and outside, and then we will make, we'll come up with a new idea for the time being. Unless this Friday we'll not uh, we'll not see what's gone gone gone. We will not. Uh, I mean, uh, go go so far away because uh, yeah, it depends. The, it depends yeah, a lot on the on the, the pressure. The it it depends a lot, as you were saying, on the on the pressure on how much how many people show up on Friday uh, to demonstrate. Uh, Jamal Berber was mentioning uh, a moment ago how uh, it's murky right now. What's happening in the high halls of power? Uh, we've talked about the military and. Uh, uh, how that is evolving and how that is uh, helping to influence uh, matters. Uh, the build-up to Bouteflika's departure has also included arrests and travel bans for top business leaders, leaders known as Algeria's oligarchs. Yuka Royer has that story. People call them Algerian oligarchs, 12 business tycoons who control some of the country's most vital sectors. Suspected of corruption, they have been banned from leaving the country. Private jets are no longer allowed to take off or land at the airport in Algiers. All the men are members of the Bouteflika clan, with strong ties with the outgoing president's brother, Said. His closest ally, Ali Haddad, the former head of Algeria's biggest business lobby, was arrested on Sunday near the border with Tunisia. Others, such as industrial tycoon Karim Kuninef and his brother Raida, and Mahiedin Takut, a giant in the transport sector, are also accused of corruption. Investigators believe they used their ties with the president to expand their business empires and to amass personal fortunes. The course of action for these business leaders was determined by their proximity to power. They obviously benefited from measures taken by the country's leadership, but they also worked in a way that benefited the president to return the favour. On the street, many question whether the apparent swoop on Bouteflika's inner circle is a genuine attempt to crack down on corruption or simply a way to divert attention. We don't believe in anything anymore. Whether it's Haddad or somebody else they put in prison, it's just a charade. Protesters are calling for a drastic change to reform the economy hampered by cronyism in the resource-rich nation. Yeah, Ali Haddad has been formally charged uh, this, the, this Wednesday. Uh, Amina Afaf Shaeb, the, uh, the, this uh, travel ban, the arrest, what do you make of it? Well... I think I, there are many attitudes we could have and many interpretations. 
One of which is, well, Gaid Saleh is probably wanted to uh, demonstrate, uh, give a guarantee to the people, a strong message telling them, look, uh, we're going to end the corruption. Look, um, another interpretation is that these people, well, it's not their money that they're fleeing with because their money is elsewhere. We had Panama Papers showing us where they're hiding the, the corruption. Yeah, Algeria money. figured in the Panama exactly. Papers. Exactly. But w we don't want them to get out of Algeria in order to div divulge information that could hurt the Bouteflika clan. Uh, clearly, keep your friends close and your enemies closer, especially when they have files uh, on corruption, etc. So these are uh, two, uh, two at least explanations that justify the skepticism that was met with uh, these, uh, these uh, informations. These you're, you're a young entrepreneur in a nation uh, where you have lots of state-run companies, a lot of things around Sonatrach, which is the big state oil company. Uh, it's uh, been a, it, it, and so you have this link that this natural link between these state-owned companies and politics. Definitely, uh, I mean uh, the, the Sunatrak and the oil and gas is uh, is uh, literally the the, the heart uh, of uh, Algeria financially, and uh, more than ninety five percent of the the exports are just uh, gas and oil, and uh, it is also at the heart of the system and uh, the, its mechanism because it's all based on well corruption based on selling that oil and gas, putting uh, a portion of that money. Uh, in their pockets, redistributing to buy uh, social peace and uh, leaving uh, all this in an open. So how do you how do you change that? Because tomorrow Algeria will still be dependent on oil and gas. Well, today we're in a very serious economic problem because we have not diversified our economy. Most of the economy in this gray illegal uh, area that has been uh, left out on purpose to leave something for Algerians to live off uh, to live off. And today this. This is a, a major challenge, the economic challenge, uh, and this is like a huge reform, and Algerians uh, really have big expectations when it comes to this. The rest of the world is discovering, Jamal Berber, that uh, the Algeria of today is nothing like the Algeria of when Abdelaziz Bouteflika came to power uh, two decades ago. Yeah, you have the, this economy, which is overly dependent on, on oil and gas, but you have this young population a lot of which has gone to university and is uh, much more cosmopolitan than it was two decades ago. Absolutely true. I think Algeria changed completely. And um, th they did lots of, of investment, in housing, uh, highways, trains, and mostly the most important was university and, and uh, teaching for the population, the girls and the boys. Now they're at equivalence in the universities. You have as many girls as boys in universities and in the, in the young entrepreneurs and in the young employment in Algeria. So there is an, there is an excellent uh, situation from the population point of view and the training and the skills. That's a good situation, much better than it was 25 or 30 years ago. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the last three or four years, the price of oil has been going down and the production of oil in Algeria is going down and the consumption of oil in Algeria is going up. And this is a scissor that is really cutting in the reserves of the country. And yes, you're absolutely right. In the, in the very short future, if things don't change, we will face very big difficulties. On that score, uh, what's going to happen now in, in Algeria? Because we have these rising expectations. Uh, we, is it going to stay peaceful if you have uh, in the near future? If it doesn't stay peaceful, uh, it will not be uh, because of the people. I think it will be because of the regime. Because as you said here, uh, they have many privileges. Uh, they are banning people from, uh, they are preventing people from uh, uh, going out of the country, but they allow them uh, to be corrupted because corruption is in the DNA of Algeria since uh, the independence. Uh, so they know everything, and you're right, I think that uh, they don't care of their money, but they don't want the information and files to get, to, to get away. So it's like, it's very hypocrite to see that today they, they try to, to, uh, to convince us that they are fighting against corruption. I think that they are all corrupted. Uh, the only question is who's the, more, the most corrupted uh, inside uh, the army and inside the government today? So I think that the, the, the Algerian 
people know everything and he knows that uh, people know that they don't have to be violent, that they have to, 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 to remain peaceful. And uh, a big change uh, uh, between today and uh, 20 years ago, uh, internet, uh, people are very connected. Everybody uh, is looking uh, what's going on in Algeria. So they, they, they can't do whatever they want. But I think that uh, they will try to, to keep uh, the more the more privileged they they, um, they, they can, uh, because uh, you, you were talking about economy, uh, so that try can work um, differently. Uh, we have we we need a new leadership, a new link between between uh, these uh, big companies uh, and uh, the state and the population. They have to redistribute uh, wealth uh, in the population. And today, uh, some people have taken advantage of Algeria, and we know that the economic situation of Algeria is very weak today, and we have to pay attention to that. Uh, Malik Sarai, uh, at this point in time, what's going to uh, what's going to give? Especially, you you, you heard there just now, Majid Mesaouden mentioned that uh, the big difference with two decades ago is the internet. Of course, we saw in Egypt in 2011 how uh, everybody was praising the fact that it was a Facebook revolution, that uh, it was a leaderless revolution, and we know how it ended there. What are the pitfalls Algeria needs to avoid? Exactly, but uh, if we continue like that, we will have very, very difficult uh, 2020 year. Next year, maybe be the, the 20, 2019, since we have already engaged many programs, we will not uh, suffer much like the next year. Uh, but the, what, what, what I want to like to say that the corruption is uh, tremendous, very, very big, not only in the in the few uh, around uh, through the few personality they sit in, but there are hundreds and hundreds taking uh, control of all kind of of agreement between the uh, Algerian company and the and the multinational at international level. The, the things is very very bad. It will take time to to clean this. And meanwhile, the 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 economy of Algeria will 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 suffer much, particularly that. Uh, uh, we 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 will parallel, we will finish our our uh, our I mean uh, financial uh, stock in the at the end of the of this year. This is uh, that's why if we don't uh, uh, I mean accelerate the process and uh, to to be ready for uh, uh, 2020, mm -hmm. then at this time Algeria will have will have big big problem with not only the partners but also inside the country and we will be we will not be able to answer to all this request of the young people that sometimes they didn't understand that uh, to, to build something is is very difficult and take time and take too much money. They are in hurry. They want to turn quickly how to explain to all these people uh, the, the what, uh, what, what what's are going the on is from, from now. Uh, Amina Fafshayeb, yes. uh, th let me ask it's you very briefly here, because we saw in Tunisia people were a little disillusioned. After uh, the, the, the yes, the, 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 the move to multi-party democracy has happened, but the economic struggles continue, the red tape, and there was disillusion, and it's not going fast enough. Do you, do you share that concern that you heard from Malik Sarai that I think people could be disappointed? I think it's not about being fast, about being good in the reform. Uh, obviously, there is no going back today uh, to the old ways because they have proved how uh, bad they are for Algeria uh, politically, economically, socially, culturally, in all these levels. And the work is going to be on the long run, and everyone has and, to keep that. And people in know mind. it. Yeah. People should know it. All right. I want to thank you, Amina Afaf Shayeb. I want to thank as well Majid Mesaouden, Malik Sarai for being with us uh, from Algiers and Jamal Derba. Please stay with us, though. Media Watch is next.